Hello everyone, welcome to my art channel where we do painting tutorials. As I was going through my sketchbook figuring out what to draw, I realized I was really missing my old style whimsical galaxies and night skies, so why not make one? I start by taping down my sketchbook with masking tape and I also add a binder clip because of my previous paintings uh, lift up the paper. I'm almost done with this sketchbook, I think I have like 4 sheets left, so that's about 26 sheets full of paintings and I do paint on both sides of the sheets so yeah that is a lot. I start coloring the bottom with cadmium orange just a small amount and then I diffuse it or spread it out with a dark yellow. I take some thalo blue and lightly surround the orange and the yellow with it without layering it on top because blue and yellow make green and I don't want that right now. I leave a big empty gap in the middle of the sky, well it's not empty empty, I do add a very light hint of color on it but I want it to be my lightest area in the painting. I use more pressure on the outer sides of the page to make the Taylor blue more vivid there and switch to Helio blue reddish aka dark blue and I mainly use it on the sides. I add a small hint of it very lightly in the middle. Lastly, I go over the top edges and corners with black. It's okay if the black overlaps with the dark blue, I just want to frame the painting. I fill in any gaps between the black and the dark blue with Taylo blue and then I grab my brush. I will blend with a tapping motion from light to dark. So I start from the yellow and tap towards the orange. I clean my brush on a tissue each time I move from a dark area to a lighter one, like when I move from the dark orange to the central highlight I have in the middle. Otherwise, I'm going to contaminate the lighter areas and end up with what looks like random mud. I'm tapping from the middle of the highlight towards the Taylor blue on the right side, then the helium blue and the black. I clean my brush and I repeat the same steps on the left side. I really like this technique for giving depth and texture. I don't know, I just think it really helps with the whimsical effect I'm going for. It reminds me a lot of the wet on wet technique with watercolors. The motion I'm doing with the brush is very similar to the needle of a sewing machine. Just press on the paper, lift, press again, lift, press, you get the drill. Also, it dries extremely fast because I'm barely using any water, which can be a plus or a minus depending on what you want to do. Once I finish the sky, I grab some white gouache and dilute it with a drop of water. Then I press on the brush's handle to add splatters for stars. Feel free to substitute with white acrylic or you can also draw the stars by hand with a white opaque marker. White watercolors or the white watercolor pencil from the set will not work because they are typically transparent meaning once they dry, you will not be able to see any of the white. It cannot layer on top of a dark color. Also keep in mind, if using gouache or acrylics, the more water you add and the harder you press on the handle, the bigger the stars will be. And on the other side, the less water and the lighter you press, the tinier the stars will be. You may want to experiment on a scrap piece of paper before tackling the painting just to get a feel of the consistency of the paint and what pressure to use on the handle. Add as many stars till your heart's content, there is no limit to this. Once I'm happy with the results, I scribble some ground with black and color it in thickly. Then I sketch a couple of utility poles and the wires that connect them. If drawing is not your thing, there is a traceable for this tutorial and many others over on my Patreon page, Sunshine Arts. And like always, you can find the full list of all of the supplies used, mentioned and recommended down in the description box of this video.
When drawing the wires, I suggest you sharpen your pencil to a fine point, it just helps get nice crisp lines. Whereas when you need it to color big areas, like for an example the ground, it's useful to have a blunt tip so you can cover more space faster and easier. Then I just activate the ground so the black doesn't look like the big random scribble that it is. It really doesn't matter if you blend it right to left and make it smooth or use a tapping motion like we did with the sky. Both techniques are valid. Lastly, I just peel off the tape in the opposite direction to avoid the paper from tearing and erase any pencil lines I have left over from my initial sketch. I'd like to give a very special thank you to my patrons for the month of September and thank you all for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please let me know by liking, commenting and if you have not already, please consider subscribing to the channel. The next milestone is 20,000 subscribers and it would really mean a lot to me if we could reach that. And we'll see each other next week with a new video tutorial.